The final step on the video production workflow is to export your project. What I mean by that is you need to take this project, which is just a bunch of clips here residing in a sequence in the timeline panel, and you need to turn that into a single video that people could then watch. People cannot watch your project unless they own Premiere Pro and have all your assets and have your project files, or unless they're looking over your shoulder as you're editing it. So you want to take it from this current state here inside Premiere Pro and turn it into a file that people can then watch. And to do that, you export it. So I'm going to show you generically how that works here in this movie, and I'll go into details right at the end of the course. So first order of business is to select the timeline panel, and you can see that's orange around there. If I don't select it, then I won't have the option of exporting it. Go over to File, and then it's Export, and it says Media, and we're going to focus on Media. If I click away here and don't have that selected, I'll go File, Export, and Media won't be an option there. So I'll go back and select this guy, go File, Export, Media, and that opens up the Export Settings dialog box. So here's where you decide what kind of video format you're going to use so that people can watch your project. If you go over here to Match Sequence Settings, for example, I click that, then Premiere Pro attempts to come up with a format that matches the original format here. These guys are MP4 files down here, and we click on Match Sequence Settings, and they pretty much match that. So that's close enough with an MPEG output. But I want to just go beyond the easy approach here and show you some other options, so I'll uncheck that. We'll go, let's say, to H.264, which is what these guys really are down here. They're MP4 files. Once you do that, then you have what are called presets. So the presets allow you to select what kind of hardware that you're going to have people view this project on, or you know, if it's going to be inside a browser, or if it's going to be broadcast, whatever. There you can choose from this voluminous list of presets, including iPad, iPhone, Androids, and then also we've got a bunch of high definition formats here. So I select high definition, 1080p 2997. Where is that? There it is right there. That's the original size for this guy. And then you can choose to export audio or video or both, and they have more options down here. That's one way to go about doing this thing. Let's change this to QuickTime. QuickTime is kind of a different approach, and again, we'll get into the details later, but let's take a look at QuickTime. If I choose a preset, we'll just say NTSC DV like that. And you notice when it says DV, it has these letterboxed view because DV is not widescreen. So that's how it would look if you just took the DV preset and went from there. That's probably not what you want to do. If I go to widescreen, you'd think that'll take care of it, but actually widescreen is different than HD, so it's got these little bars on the side there like that. But let's just go to DV, and you know, we could say we're done now. We can export it, and we have those letterbox bars along the top there. But I can go down and choose a codec, which is one additional step when you're working with QuickTime and a couple of other formats. I'll change the codec to HD, DVC Pro HD, which is a specific kind of a format that's used in a lot of camcorders. And there you go. Now it is really HD and fills the frame. And this will create a pretty darn large MOV file, a QuickTime MOV file. So now the process would be to click on Q, and that opens up the Adobe Media Encoder and puts this guy in a queue. I've already got one there already. Now this adds another one to the queue. You can load up a whole bunch of uh, projects here. If you want to export your project in multiple formats, you can choose a different format each time you open it up in the queue. Then you get a whole bunch of guys here in the queue, and then you click on this little play button, which starts the queue, and it'll start actually transcoding these things. And this is when you go off and get a coffee while this thing does all the transcoding work. So that's how that works. You can also do things individually. So if I go back and go File, Export, Media, if I get everything all set up here inside the Export settings, I just click on Export, and it'll just immediately transcode it right at that moment without having to put it in the queue. I can also select items here inside the project panel. If I just take a clip here, I can say, well, let's just export that clip. If I go File, Export, it'll be just of that clip. It'll say entire clip down here, saying that you're exporting the entire clip. You can also do a part of the clip. Or I can export part of a timeline. So right now I've got the whole work area selected, the whole project selected using what's called the work area bar. If I were to select, just say, a couple of clips using the work area bar, I can shorten this down. Now if I export it, it'll export only that part of the project, so export media. And the default is always the work area. Put my current time indicator to where you can see the part that we're going to export. That's the default, the work area, the thing that's underneath that bar. Well, before the bar went for the entire length of the project, so we would have exported the entire project even though work area was selected. I could have changed this to the entire project, and then it would have then sort of overridden the work area bar. But as long as the work area bar is selected, you can select just part of the project and export that. Maybe just a clip or just a few seconds, whatever you want. And again, it can be put in the queue, or you can click export to go directly there. You can also export still frames. If I go back to export this, 
and click on Media, you'll see in this format a number of still image formats like BMP and Targa and TIFF, JPEG, stuff like that. An easier way to do it, though, is just to click on this little icon over here, and you can export whatever frame is currently selected. And you have all those selections here as well, and you can store that away as a single clip. So you can export audio, video, still frames, entire sequence, part of a sequence, or just a clip. And I'm going to go over all those little details when I discuss exporting toward the end of this course.